Hey guys, what's up? It's Randy and welcome back to another video. And today we're gonna to talk about why size matters. Welcome back to another video guys. On this channel, I make videos about audio tech and other nerdy stuff just like that. And if you guys are in the market for a new microphone, either a small diaphragm or a large diaphragm condenser, my biggest piece of advice would be don't read the box. These guys are notorious for putting stats and specs and frequency response charts on their boxes to try to sell you on their equipment. But honestly, try as many microphones as you can borrow them, rent them, do what you need to do to get them in your space. Most importantly, try them on your instruments to see which one's really gonna flatter that instrument the best. When I was doing the research for this video, there were actually a few differences that surprised me about large diaphragms and small diaphragms. So let's break it down into five categories. We've got sensitivity, frequency range, SPL capabilities, dynamic range, and then finally self noise. Okay, first off with sensitivity. When we're talking about sensitivity of microphones, it's important to note that that actually refers to the output, not its ability to yeah? Uh, that reminded me, I read in the news today that uh, a tiny psychic escaped from jail. Oh, yeah? So now there's a small medium at large. Nice. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so as I was saying, when we're talking about microphone sensitivity. We're actually talking about the microphone's physical ability to output voltage. For that reason, a large diaphragm is actually way more sensitive than a small diaphragm condenser. Uh, the reason being, it's just simple physics. When this diaphragm moves, it produces a lot more energy because it's much larger. You can think of uh, like a transport truck on a windy bridge. The transport truck is gonna be rocking like crazy, but your little Honda Civic might not be. So for that reason, for sensitivity, the large diaphragm is a big winner. Okay, next up we have frequency range. Now both of these microphones will do a great job at picking up all different types of frequencies across the whole spectrum. But what happens is in real life we have what are called complex waves, which are basically uh, combinations of different frequencies. So we'll have really low frequencies and then stacked on top of that we'll have really high frequencies. In order to pick up all those frequencies accurately, you need a microphone that's really nimble and agile and can actually respond to those frequencies very quickly. So that's why these microphones work really well for that. These ones are a bit too clunky and a bit too slow to pick up some of those finer details. So for that reason, a small diaphragm condenser wins for frequency range. And that's why when they're doing uh, really accurate recordings or they're shooting at a room to kind of build a room's profile, they'll use those tiny little Earthworks microphones which have a capsule that's like this big just because it's so nimble, it can really respond quickly to, uh, to different frequencies. Next up, we have sound pressure levels. And this is actually a win for the small diaphragm. This can actually withstand quite a lot more sound pressure. And the reason being is that the diaphragm is a little bit stiffer than the diaphragm in this. So when this one starts moving, there's actually much more of a risk of this physically bottoming out. Like you can actually put too much sound into it that it bottoms out the microphone. This one can as well, but not nearly as bad. Okay, next up we have self noise. And a lot of self noise actually comes from just air molecules that just happen to bounce off the diaphragms of microphones, resulting in some voltage output. And because of that, large diaphragms actually win for self noise. Small diaphragms are much more noisy. And the reason being is that those air molecules hit that harder diaphragm that we just talked about and transfer to voltage. So large diaphragms actually have much less self noise than small diaphragms. Okay, and last but certainly not least, we have dynamic range. This is actually a win for small diaphragm condensers. And even though we just talked about how these have more self noise, they also have significantly more sound pressure levels. So the total dynamic range is much more than a large diaphragm. Okay, so what does this all mean? Well, of course, size does matter. Uh, this is a huge generalization here, but generally speaking, small diaphragms tend to be a little bit brighter sounding. Um, they tend to pick up a little bit more similar to real life, generally speaking over the competition. Large diaphragms, on the other hand, tend to distort the sound slightly in what we'd consider to be a flattering way. And that's why these typically win for vocal recordings and stuff like that. They get rid of some of those nasty high frequencies and they do it in sort of a flattering way. But both microphones are totally different, so you have to figure out which one is gonna be right for your application. Is this gonna sound good on a violin? Of course. Is this gonna sound good on a violin? Of course, but they are gonna have different outcomes. So if you want your violin to pop out in the mix and you know stand out above everything else, this might be a better option because it, it will pick up some of those high frequencies with a bit more clarity. Uh, this, on the other hand, will sound a bit warmer. So if you want to really make a violin sound rich and get rid of some of those nasty, you know, bow harmonics, this might be a better option. It's just really important to know how they will affect your sound so you guys can pick the right one for the job. And of course, there are some other considerations, things like polar pattern, of course. Does it need a power supply? Will it fit? This, this may fit in more situations than this will. 
things to consider. Okay, so which one is best for your recording? Well, you really have to use your ears. And I know that's a total cop out of an answer to say, but it's totally true. And there's a reason that big studios have both small diaphragms and large diaphragms, and they use them interchangeably. So definitely try both, see if you can get both in your space with your instruments and your gear to see which one is gonna work best for you. Hopefully someday you'll have a few different ones to choose from and you can, you know, A, B between a few different large diaphragms and A, B between a few different small diaphragms to really know that you're getting the right pick. But ultimately these are just big brushes. They'll do the same thing for your painting. You just have to figure out which one is right for you. And that is it for this video. I hope that this was helpful for you. If it was, please feel free to subscribe down below and we'll see you guys in the next video.